You're listening to the Create What You Speak podcast, where I invite you to come along with me as we shape our own reality together. My intention is to bring out the magic in you. Now let's get started. Come along now, run away from the humdrum. We'll go to a place that is safe from greed, anger, and boredom. We'll dance and sing till sundown, at peace with abandon. We'll sleep when the morning comes, and we'll rise by the sound of the bird song. My name is Sloan Fremont, and today I have a special guest, Sarah Airy, and we're going to be talking about her book, The Universe Fucking Loves Me, Getting Out of Your Own Way and Into Your Flow. And by the end of the show, my intention is for you to be inspired to live a life where you absolutely trust that the universe fucking loves you. So let's get started. All right, welcome to the Create What You Speak podcast. We are continuing our monthly intention this week of trusting the universe. And as I mentioned in my intro, my guest this week is Sarah Airy, who is the author of the book, The Universe Fucking Loves Me, Getting Out of Your Way and Into Your Flow. And I picked up Sarah's book recently at at a store here in Nashville, and as soon as I saw this, I was like, I have to have her on the show. So Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Flo. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. Why don't we start out by having you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I started working with energy back in 1990 with Reiki, Mm -hmm. and it was helping me explore Explore consciousness, which I've always been interested in. And over the years, I've tried out a lot of different techniques and gone down different avenues with it. And then in 2004, I started working with a woman named Tapas Fleming, who had developed a healing technique called TAT that's part of the energy psychology, kind of like tapping and a lot of other things that are popular now. Mm -hmm. and went very deep with that. And then in 2000, I think it was 11 or 12, I started working with a business coach named Christine Kane. And I had joined her program to expand my personal business in addition to being Tapas's education director and helping her create an international certification program for TAT. I was doing my own business of working with private clients and leading workshops and groups around specific topics. And so I joined Christine's program to augment my personal business. And six months into the program, she called me up one day and said, would you be interested in doing what you do with all of my clients? <laughs> like, uh, sure. <laughs> and the great thing about that was I had been so immersed in the world of energy and healing and spirituality for so long. And then this was really getting me into practicality. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. all of that stuff is great, but how do we create a thriving business? How do we truly get out of our way and get stuff done? Right, right. How do we apply that to the day-to-day? Exactly. And so that's really my passion now is helping my clients show up in their lives. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for so long, spirituality, you the really deep spiritual people went and lived in a cave or in a monastery or <laughs> away from the world. And what I want to do is help people live spiritually in the world. That's amazing because as you're talking about that, I, I do get that feeling that it's like almost like it's almost like an unwritten rule that we can't combine the two, right? We either have to be one or the other. We have to be spiritual. And if we're spiritual, we do, you know, X, Y, and Z, like you're talking about live on the mountain, right? And then most people are like, well, I can't do that. So I guess I need to be the other side, the practical side, but then that doesn't feel good all the time either. Right? So I love this, this combining of the two to make it like actually being able to live it. Like you're saying. Yeah. And how do we create a life? that has us feeling whole Mm -hmm. and in integrity with ourselves and 
what we believe and what we want to create in the world, not from a place of lack and have to and should, right. but from a place of our soul's expression. Right. You know, I agree, and I've been on this journey. Like I, I call it the journey um, when I changed my life. It's been three years now for me, but um, yes, and that that was that was the life I used to live. I, I, I would say the, the should have and I could and I, you know, just this drudgery, right. Of this day to day of like, like there's gotta be more than this. Right. And in that, I, as you're talking about that, like I, those feelings are coming up again for me because I can remember being that way. And now that I'm on the other side of it, I'm like, Oh my God, there's just such a better way to live. Yeah. And you know, most of the population lives from that space because that's how our parents lived right. and their parents. Right. Well, and, and it, it, so it, now we have. It, yeah, and I think it kind of goes back to what you said too: is is it's not often taught to combine the two, right? The spiritual to the practicality, and so that's that's what I want to get into today. And I have a lot of questions for you, so I want to I want to <laughs> get to this because this I, I finished your book, um, and I want to tell the story before we get into this. Like I said, I have a lot of questions, but. Uh, I want to tell the story really quick about how I found your book and um, this will kind of set the stage for what we're going to talk about. Um, so a few weeks ago, I, I talked about this on the show. Um, I, I think I called it, um, what did I call it? Decide. It, it, the topic of the show was deciding it was taken care of. Like, like whatever it was for me, like I made this decision that I'm just going to decide that it's taken care of, right? That it's handled. The universe has it handled. And, I, I was in this, this like energetic space with that, that I had like such a conviction for that, that even though things weren't going particularly well when I made that decision to do that, um, I, I had such a feeling of conviction that this, this is just handled. I'm, I'm done with the worry and the fear and you know, all that I, I choose to believe it's handled. And so in that particular example, I had a, a, a massive extreme change in my job situation for the positive for me within like 48 hours of, of making that decision. So I thought, okay, so I did this once. All right. I, okay, good. I can do this again. Right. And so I, I was, um, I, again, a couple weeks ago in that space and, and having this feeling that trusting the universe and believing that it's handled. And what I also found with that when I did that, and I, and I think you talk about this in the book about how it freed up energy for me, right? So since I wasn't fearful and full of anxiety and in this, this this terrible feeling like in the pit of my stomach, right? Like I was relaxed and I showed up more centered and I I was able to hear what was going on inside of me, right? Like hear my intuition and my internal guidance. And there was this particular Friday evening that I was thinking about what I wanted to do the next day. And Generally, I go to a Zumba class on Saturday mornings. That's just what I like to do. But this particular class that day, I, I didn't like the teacher that was going to be teaching. Like, she just wasn't my favorite. And it, like, randomly occurred to me to go to the store in Nashville called Aroma G's, where your book ended up being. And it's a metaphysical shop for, for the listeners, um, if you're not familiar with Nashville. And um, I hadn't thought of that place in a while, but it was when I kept saying, oh, I need to go there. I need to go there. And so this popped into my head and I'm like, okay, all right, I'll see how I feel in the morning. And so I get up the next morning and again, I'm kind of sitting there. Do I go to the Zumba class? And, and doing that felt like I was just checking the box to say that I went to Zumba, right? Not because I really wanted to go, but because I wanted to check the box that, oh, I should go to Zumba. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. There's something calling me to the store. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to listen to that and I'm going to go there in the morning and then I'm going to you know, go to a different dance class later in the day. So that's what I ended up doing. And I get to the shop and, and I'm wandering around and I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, right? Because there's nothing in particular that I have in my mind. And I'm, I go through all the rooms, you know, it's like this little treasure hunt in the store because there's like adjoining rooms all off. And I get to the back of the store and there's the display <laughs> with your books on it screaming, the universe fucking loves you. And I actually laughed out loud inst and instantly when I saw that. I'm like, that's why I'm here to get this book. <laughs> and so I, the other funny part of that is I picked it up like three times and put it back down and then I was like what am I doing like I know this is this is here this is why I'm here and so I picked up the book I reached out to Sarah I'm like I want to have you on the show and then when we connected the funny part of all this is Sarah said she had just been in this in the store like two days before and restocked the book so if I had came in earlier her books wouldn't have even been there so <laughs> I wanted to share that story because I love it I, I just love the way everything gets orchestrated for us to connect right when we need to Absolutely. And 
that's what it really means to get out of your own way and into your flow, not exactly. just good yourself. <laughs> right. something that's not aligned for you. Right, that doesn't feel good, right? And and we talk about that on the show a lot here about, you know, and one of my best friends and I, we always say, if it doesn't feel good, then you're probably doing it wrong, right? Like you're doing it out of that, <laughs> that feeling that you should have to do something rather than what you really want to do. Mm-hmm. I try to get away from using words like right and wrong because that has such energy of judgment. Mm -hmm. And really what it is is noticing, okay, when I do this from the energy of should, this is the impact on me. And then just making a choice about it. Because that should energy doesn't feel good, right? And, and I think we often forget that we, we can make a d another choice, right? We, we do have the option to make another choice. Yeah. So, okay, so let's get into the book. And what I first want to ask you is how you came up with the title of the book and what this book means for anybody that picks it up. So this phrase, the universe fucking loves me, is what I've said for years. <laughs> I, I love it. I have like, two I love daughters. It. Yeah. <laughs> and they used to roll their eyes. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> you're the only mother who dances into the room saying, the universe fucking loves me. <laughs> That's amazing. I would oh say, gosh. no. <laughs> you know, when I got a new client or something just worked out, I would say the universe fucking loves me. Right. And so that was how it originated and what the energy of it was. And then I went through a really challenging time with one of my girls. And mm -hmm. it was one of those times where I would wake up during the night and I could feel the stress in my heart. And it was a reminder, the universe fucking loves me. This will work out, even though I can't see it right now. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked me, you know, why even use the word fucking in the book? Because it's mm -hmm. going to turn some people off, some stores off. I was like, you know, that's the, the point is not to turn people off, but to address the fact that this is real, and it, right. it can feel hard sometimes. And those times in the middle of the night, it wasn't like, oh, this is bad. It's like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And I want to be real about that. And, like, one of the chapter titles is, there's gold in the shit. And right. <laughs> shit's getting real. Right. And you can't put frosting on it, right? And <laughs> Right. <laughs> and it's not like those inner voices go, oh, this is painful. I know this fucking hurts. I'm right. going to die. Right. Right. And I know what you're saying. And that word, using the word fuck, and I use it a lot on here and I love it. It's one of my favorite words. But it, it gets the attention, right? The day that I walked into that store, I didn't know what I was looking for, but I saw this, the 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 books, you know, your books. And if it would have said the universe loves me, I probably would have been like, yeah, okay. But because it said the universe fucking loves me, I'm like, that's it, right? Like that's, that, that, it made me laugh. It got, it got the, you know, it got my attention and it made me want more. Like, tell me more, right? Like picking it up, like, tell me more about this, you know? And, um, and you know, you talk about that and I don't want to give away the whole book, obviously, but you do talk about the, the difficulties you went through and, um, you know, what that meant for you and how you worked your, your way through that and and it, it I think we talk I talk a lot on here too about that when when you have to believe that even in the moment you, you believe that something better is on the other side in the good right it's easy in the good when you're dancing around because you have the new client right but on the other side of that when things aren't so good still being able to carry that belief with you and and trusting that yeah that's everything mm-hmm Right. It doesn't stop in the bad, right? It, it, it still continues. The universe right. still fucking loves us, even when it feels, quote, bad to us, right? Or something terrible has happened. There's still love there. And I think that's that can be the hard, the hard, at least for me, the hard time to believe or to accept or to trust, you know, all of that stuff. Oh, absolutely. And it leads us to wanting to hold on to the good times and the good feelings. And that keeps us stuck as much as anything else. Right. Right. And you talk in the book a lot about showing up authentically. And that's actually my theme for this year is to be show to be able to show up and fully express myself like authentically and know that I'm safe to do that. And I, I think 
that's that that for me has been such uh, like when I realized I wasn't doing that and I was like who like then who am I right if I'm not this other version that I thought I sh- had to show up and be like who am I and so I, I'd like to talk through that like what that means with you and, and like why it's important for the listeners to feel like they can do that and how it you know how it changes things when you do that yeah in the book, I use the analogy of a beautiful mosaic stained glass mm-hmm. window. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's how I see us as a community, a society, that each of us has our unique shape and color, gift, talents. And when we don't show up as our authentic self, the entire picture is diminished. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like we and lose the we flow live, of that. Yeah. Yeah, and the vibrancy. And there is something that you are here to contribute. Mm-hmm. And it may feel big, it may feel small, and that's totally irrelevant. It's just a matter of sharing whatever you are here to share and create whatever you're here to create, whether it's a beautiful home or a business or a piece of art. It's making your contribution. And that's important for the whole, but it's also vital for your own Mm well-being and vibrancy. Mm -hmm. Right. When you no longer show up with the mask, right? Like you can, like, I think, I mean, for me, I know I spent the majority of my life with the mask on and it's, it's so, um, like I said, it was for me, it felt like what, what, who am I then if I don't have that, right? If I don't, and and I'm not, you know, not in every area, right? But there was a big part of me that realized I wasn't being my true self and as a result I'm doing these things that feel so out of sync with my own self because I think that's what I should be doing but in reality it's the opposite right because it doesn't even feel good right and it's not me right and you know for me that the joy and the the vitality of life is to continue exploring where am I being me and where is there still space for me to be more me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Expand into that. And how do you, how do you, what's your, for you, like what's your signal that you're not being authentic in your own self? For me, it's I start to worry mm-hmm. or I go into a distraction like those things we do that, whether it's binging on some Netflix show <laughs> or, you know, it could even be social media working like out that. constantly. Yeah. Social media, whatever it is we do to remove ourselves from a situation within ourselves. And so we do those things so we don't have to think about it. Is that, is that how you feel about it? Well, not even not to think about it, but not be with it, yeah. not experience the emotion of it, not not deal with whatever it's bringing up in us. Like in the book, I talk about the anagram stuck. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that stands yes. for our stuck thoughts, unprocessed feelings, and fears. Mm-hmm. And those can be scary and, when we, and painful yeah. and, and all of these things, right? And sometimes, I mean, we just don't want to look at them. It's, I mean, we're all, we all do that, right? Yeah. And so we turn to a distraction or, you know, an extreme version of an astra- an a distraction is an addiction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so, it's our attempt to escape what's going on inside of us. Right, because we don't want to see that or feel that or you know any of that and then on the the flip side of that though when we are showing up authentically for me at least it feels like like to me to distract feels like a lot of work 
right? Because I'm, 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 my mind's churning and it's not going to stop churning, right? Because it just loves to tell those stories and loves to run the loop. And there's so much energy expended in that. But when I'm, what I noticed for myself when I, when I did start showing up authentically and it was baby steps at first, right? Because that was, that was, um, for me, pretty scary. But I felt like it released so much stuff that you taught that stuff that, that you, you, re, you refer to that it, um, to me, it was like a more like relaxed way to live, right? To be able to come to terms with that and be like, hey, this is okay. And I'm safe to do this. That was a big thing for me too, feeling safe to do it. Absolutely. And I love that you mentioned the baby steps because taking small steps makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It actually changes the trajectory that you're on. So it's not that you have to totally overhaul your life in one day. Right. It's not realistic or healthy. It's that you just keep looking for what are those incremental changes. Right. That compound over time. And it may be. Right. Absolutely. And. It may be that there comes a time for a bigger step, but all those little steps you've made have prepared you for the bigger ones. Agreed. And I also felt like when I took the baby steps that it gave me the proof. For me, I I need proof to know that I can do it, right? I need, like, in my own experiences, I need proof with my own experiences a lot of times to get that momentum going. And I felt like the baby steps gave me that proof because it showed me, okay, you can do this and you didn't die, right? Like you can do this and it it actually turned out good, right? I found that to be very helpful too. Yes, absolutely. And that there are times when I've been doing an energy clearing for myself and stuff has come up and it's like, oh, this is awful, yay. (laughs) I'm not going to be carrying this big heavy thing around anymore. Right, right, because you know you're going to move past it, right? You know, And you know that because you've done it. Yes. And there have also been some times where it still just feels so real and there's a lot of emotion with it that, you know, something's come up and I have just Mm -hmm. cried and Mm -hmm. cried. And even in those moments, I know that I am on my way to freedom. Right. Have, when we're pushing the stuff down, we're actually staying engaged with it. And then it's like we're playing this huge game of whack-a-mole, trying to keep the next <laughs> right. and, and thing from popping up. And there's so much energy in that, right? It takes a lot of effort to do that. I, I That's something I, that was, like, really profound for me to realize that, that how much energy that I was expending to try to keep those things down. And right? um, there's a quote I have right here on my computer, and it says, real but not true. And I love that quote because when things like you're talking about, when those emotions come up, like it, 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 because a lot of times, especially in the law of attraction world, right? Like, um, sometimes I feel afraid to feel the bad emotions because I don't want more bad to come in. Right. And then I beat myself up over that and I blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. But that phrase real, but not true helped me to, okay, I can, acknowledge that I'm having these feelings or these emotions or these whatever, but that doesn't mean it's true, right? It doesn't mean that I have to buy into the story. It doesn't mean that I'm stuck here. You know, it doesn't mean any of this stuff, right? I I can move past it. Yes. And that's something I talk about a lot, that we can acknowledge our thoughts, acknowledge our feelings, and know that they aren't the truth with a capital T. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, this is how I'm feeling. Yes, these are my thoughts. And there's much more to this. Right, right. And so let's talk about, I want to talk about one of the chapters that you have that's it's not about the lessons. And this is actually the first chapter I flipped to when I opened up the book, which was perfect for me where I was at because I had just been having this conversation with one of my friends about lessons. And I think I've talked about lessons on, and I'm putting air quotes with lessons, but I, I think I've talked about lessons on here a lot. And so I've said so many times, I am sick of the fucking lessons. Like, I'm sick of it. Like, I've done, I'm doing so much inner work. Like, I'm, you know, I'm doing things differently. I'm sick of the fucking lessons. And when when I flipped to this and I read this, cha- you know, the chapter, it's not about the lessons. And instantly I felt relief in that. 
right? Like, because like you talk about in the book, learning a lesson reminds me of being a child and being scolded and, you know, like I did something wrong or bad. So you better learn your lesson, little girl, (laughs) you know, that kind of stuff. Like, or that I had to have like gone through some struggle and, and pain and, you know, drug myself from the dredges of hell, right, to get through this. And this chapter for me brought a lot of relief, but I'd like to talk about that a little bit more about why it's not about the lessons. Yeah, looking at it as the universe is testing us, Mm -hmm. we have to learn the lessons, is more of that right, wrong, good, bad kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. When something happens and we think, oh, haven't I learned this lesson yet? (laughs) We're missing that this is a gift from the universe showing us what we're still holding on to inside so do you have a specific example you can give me that we can talk about so yeah so let's talk about relationships because that's for me um, something I'm working on showing up authentically on and what I felt like and I just had this conversation with my friend about that I felt like I was repeating the same patterns and that and I was like, but I did something different so why what is the lesson I have to learn here and I felt like you know say even saying that to myself like kept me like in a box right it kept me stuck to this one story it kept me from seeing other opportunities because all I could see it as was a quote a lesson and that felt terrible yeah yes now all of this is not to say that we don't grow and expand through our experiences but looking at it as Okay, what lesson did I learn here? Like you said, it feels like you're in a box and am I done yet? Did I, did I pass? Right. Did I pass? Can I breathe now? That's how it felt to me. Right. Yeah. So if you look at it as I am in the process of expanding and letting go, powerful questions to ask yourself would include, well, what had me do this differently this time? So when you said you did something differently in that in the most recent situation, what did what had you do it differently? I think I was to the point. So this was I, and I talked about this on the show. It was about a date I went on with a guy where I was um, decided to show up a hundred percent myself. Like I said, this the, the theme for myself this year, like show up a hundred percent authentically. And so I found myself when I was getting ready for the date, I was, um, you know, I could feel I was getting ready and I could feel this feeling when I was going into my closet and deciding what to wear, like, Oh, what's he going to think of me? Like, how's this going to, you know? And I was like, no, you know what? I'm doing this differently. I'm going to, I'm going to look great in whatever I'm wearing. I'm already setting my intention for this, right? I'm going to show up. I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be, you know, my best self. I'm going to, you know, this is me, take it or leave it. Like I, but I know I love myself and I'm enough. And so I'm going to show up differently this time. And there were like, as the night went on, like there was this one part of the night where he like put his arm around my waist. And I talked about this on another episode, right? And previously I would have been like, Oh no, like don't touch my fat rolls. Right. But this time I was like, no, this is me. Like, this is me. Take it or leave it. Right. And how I had such a different experience on the date when I did that, like it was just a totally different experience, but I was to the point with myself where I'm like, I can't keep doing this. Like I I just can't, I don't, I can't even, Another, I can't stand myself another second on this topic showing up that way. <laughs> Does that make sense? Totally. A friend of mine's child used to say, I can't want to. Yeah. And I love that phrase. Like, I just can't want to do this anymore. Right. Right. Yes. And so you can look at that and say, my commitment to my own authenticity gave me freedom and relaxation and fun. And it did, 100%, yes. Yes, and that's something you can take forward with you. And it, it, again, yeah. This is a gift. Yes, and it gave me that different, um, it gave me, I call it proof, but it gave me that you did this differently and you didn't die. 
you actually had a great experience. So now you can do this again, right? And, and again, and you talk about in the book also about uh, on expansion, about expanding into the rings as we expand further into ourselves. Like, so instead of the lesson, it, you're a bad girl, you need to learn your lesson, right? No, it's more about this expanding outwards into a, a more authentic version of ourself, right? Like, which I absolutely love that perspective because it lesson feels constricting and in that box to me where I can't see anything else. But expansion is like, I can open up and breathe and I'm not waiting for, quote, the lesson to be learned. Right. This is, oh, I'm in expanded territory here. And, it feels and one good. of the points with the rings, <laughs> yes. One of the points with the rings is that whatever ring is next for you, so this is kind of the opposite of the peeling through the onion to get yes, to the floor. Yep. This is yes. you in the middle expanding outward. Yes, I and love that. Whatever, yeah, whatever the ring around you is, is the old thoughts and patterns and beliefs that have had you feel safe up until now. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of fitting in has protected you in ways. And now you are at a point that instead of being protective, it's become constrictive. Yes. It was suffocating. And so, yes. And that chasing is what lets you know, oh, there's something here that I don't need anymore. Mm -hmm. And the, the interesting part of that was I felt I like fought myself on letting it go. It was like I knew it wasn't serving me, yet I guess my ego or whatever it, it was like clawing to keep that part of me still there, which I found yeah, really interesting. Yeah, in the book I call that your safety self. Yeah. Yeah, it so your safety <laughs> self is that part of you that, right, because its whole job is keeping you safe. Right. And for it, safe means small, doing all the things you've done before, like not going into new territory, red alert, red alert. Right, right. And it's our job to say, safety self, I hear you. I get you love me and want to protect me. And just to check and say, you know, is this a warning I need to heed? Like, the safety self is also the part that says, don't walk down that dark alley. Exactly, right. By yourself. Right. It doesn't discern so what the it, activity is. It just, its goal is 100% safe, to keep you safe. Right. Exactly. And so, if you determine this is just, you know, the safety self, when you need to stay small while I'm ready to expand. Right. And you go through that period of discomfort. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, the discomfort. And the discomfort is actually, uh, yeah, it's actually a signal that you are in the process of expanding. And it's okay, right? And it's okay to do that. Yeah. And it, it is. It, and I think with that, again, and it, to bring back what, this topic of our month, the monthly topic I have for the show is trusting the universe and your book topic of the universe fucking loves me to do that. When we go through that expansion and we go through that discomfort, we have to, at least for me, like I said at the beginning of the show, when I was talking about, I made that decision that it's taken care of, right? It's, it's handled. Like, even if I can't see it right here in this like red hot minute, it's handled. And so there, there is a level of trust that comes with that, right? That we have to, it's almost like, I always call this like the free falling, right? Because I can't see quite yet. I have no, no, um, nothing in my reality right at the moment is, is like giving me any signal that this is working, but I know and I trust and I, I have to believe that, it, that it's going to work out for me. And so what are some ways that we can continue to build on that trust with the universe to know that we're protected and that the universe really does fucking love us? That's a great question. Um, one of the things is, you know, we hear a lot about gratitude, being gratitude. And we hear it a lot because it really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. I call it harvesting the energy of mm -hmm. accomplishment. Mm -hmm. too, when I'm 
working with clients. So I have them write down what have been your recent successes or each day make a practice of what are the successes and then feel the gratitude. Like take it into your body. Yeah, actually allow yourself to accept the good that you did, right? And feel that. Yeah, and and experience it so that it's not just something in your head. Like when you talked about seeing the title, oh, the universe loves me, yeah. That would have stayed at the head level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we want is to actually experience it. Mm -hmm. So letting yourself do that so you're not always looking at what's not there, what you haven't accomplished. But having these reminders, oh, the universe does fucking love. <laughs> right. And, and like you said, making the choice to have that, like to continue to remind yourself of that, right? It's not a one and done kind of thing, right? It's a, it's a daily, I, I mean, it's to me, it's like it's recommitting every day to decide this is how it's going to go for me. This is what I choose to believe. This is the en- my come from energy, right? Like this is the energy I choose to show up in the world and, and believe in, right? It's a, it's, it's a, to me, it's a daily, sometimes a minute commitment, right? To remind myself. Yeah, you know, we have this thought like, I should be able to think it once and be done with it. Right. That's like saying I should be able to eat one meal and go the rest of my life. <laughs> right. you know, right. It's really all about how are you nurturing yourself energetically. Right. And, and that's so and funny. And with your mindset. It, yeah, and it's so funny because it's like, why do we fight against ourselves to make ourselves feel good? <laughs> you know, like I know for most of us the default is to not feel good, but – don't we want to feel good? Like, why is it our default just to to not, you know, put that same energy in feeling good, you know? Well, yeah, I think it was really telling that in Brene Brown's research, joy showed up as the most vulnerable emotion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Part of that is our cultural conditioning, and part of that is that human safety self kind of thing that we are in the process of evolving into something else. Mm -hmm. There's a whole new level of consciousness Mm -hmm. that's coming into the world and spreading through and being able to make that shift into expansion expansion requires constant self-nurturing because there's so much around us that tells us the opposite. Right. Right. And, and that expansion, that just the thought of that, like we, we said about the rings, and it just, to me, it feels so, it like settles my soul, right? It feels so good to think about it that way and to mm-hmm. be able to like think about it from a way of doing it so that I feel good, like for my overall well-being. Right, so it's a, it's a, yeah, it feels good to do it that way. Yeah, one of, one of my favorite comments somebody's made about the book is, a woman looked at it and she said, "Wow, I'm going to buy this, and if I only read the title every day, my <laughs> life will be better." Yeah, for sure, right? I mean, I have it sitting here on my desk. It goes, it travels between my desk and my the side of my bed, back and forth, because every time I look at it, it makes me smile. And, um, yeah. It's so, there's one other thing I want to talk about um, in the book that I, and I want to talk about the chapter and I want to talk about how I applied it and what it did for me. So there's a chapter called Same Old Stories. And this to me, this was that topic of the relationships that I was um, like sick of myself on, right? Like the same old stories on that topic for me were like, at, at, like I can't think this thought another minute. Like I, I know it's not true. I'm tired of this, like hanging on. Right. And so you, you talk about in the book about if you're in a situation like where you're unhappy, right? Like whatever you're, I think you, the example you give is you're in the car with your husband and he, um, gets mad about traffic or something in, in your response to that. And your suggestion is to think about if even one person you knew would have a different reaction, like then how that opens you up to other possibilities 
that can be hard to see in the moment, right? And, and, and to me, that was like, when I read that and I was thinking about that in my own life, I, it, there was, so with this guy that I had been on the date with, there was, we had been in this like break in communication and I was, I was having a hard time with that. Cause I was like, what happened? Like what, what's, you know, what's going on? And so, um, and I was struggling and I was going back to those same old stories, right? You're never going to have anybody. You're always going to be alone, like blah, 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 whatever. And, um, so I, 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 I wrote a lot when I, after I read that and I wrote like, what would my friends say about this situation? Like how would, you know, and so I was coming up with all these different, um, possibilities that I, again, feeling like that I needed to learn the lesson and that I was stuffed down in the box that I, I couldn't see in that moment. And that that felt so expansive for me. And I was, and I, after I got done writing, like journaling about all that, and I was like, it, it's like the whole thing dissolved. Like it went away. Like it, it, it just went away. And I felt a million times better. And the funny thing about that is that very next day, the guy texted me and he's like, what happened? I thought you disappeared. And I was like, I thought you disappeared. <laughs> and so we both had this like, <laughs> and so I'm struggling and I'm going, you know, I'm going through it and I don't know what he's thinking really, but he's thinking I disappeared and I'm thinking he disappeared. And so, and I'm laughing after all that. Cause I'm like all of that to find out that we both thought the same very, the very same thing. And it, it but I also know I was in, in the energetic state that had I not went through this exercise from your book and like actually spent the time to journal on it and like think about it, I wouldn't have been able to open myself up to that, right? Because I would have been back in that box thinking, I'm never going to have love. Nobody likes me. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that, right? And so I wanted to share that because that was a like just like perfect timing. Just the whole thing lined up so perfectly. And in the end, how the, the funny, the irony of the whole thing was is nothing was actually wrong. Like we both thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so much about the lens we're looking through mm -hmm. years ago I was in Spain and went to a Dali museum and he had these he had organized and designed the whole museum and there were these rooms that you would look at and it would just look like a bedroom and then he would have you stand in a certain spot and all of a sudden, you could see that it was like a um, a whole space laid out in the room, mm -hmm. and that I could have pictured like there were different lenses I was looking through. And for some lenses, it would look like nothing, and other lenses, it all made sense. Mm -hmm. And when we can put on, try on these different lenses of oh, well, this is how this friend might would see it, and this one, how this friend would see it, then it gives us new possibilities. And there's so much freedom in that. Oh, totally. If you had, because of the work you did, if you had, you really let go fully of the lens you had been looking at it through yeah. at first. Yep. And had you not, even if he had texted, you seeing it through that old lens, it might have been, oh, well, now he's just trying to, right. you know. Right. I would have made up so many stories through that lens, right? I would have completely. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, you're exactly right. That's exactly what would have happened. Yeah. So. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, so uh, yeah, I think that, um, that perspective is everything and being able to what I what I like has been like coming up for me as we've been talking throughout the show is like that again that feeling that that we have to quote learn the lesson keeps us stuffed in this box but only keeps us like within one or two perspectives probably that we, we probably don't enjoy but because we're stuffed in the box thinking we have to learn the lesson that's all we are allowed to see because of our energetic space but if we think about things from an expansive protect perspective like you you had said in the book with with the rings around you and you keep expanding into the next ring and that how you know this simple exercise of oh is there another perspective that I may not see being able to walk yourself through that it it you know I think about when people talk about there's a quote sometimes I see going around and it's like um like when you when you've pulled yourself out of basically the, the depths of hell of your own mind, right? Like you've, you've done, you took the time, you cared enough about your own well-being and your own self that you took the time, like I did with the exercise, to pull yourself up out of the, out of your own shit and actually, wait a minute, yeah, there's more to this, right? Like that, 
that kind of like living, like you talked about at the beginning of the show, like that's living, right? Like we go through these ups and downs and things, but, but being able to get out of our own stories and get out of our own heads, trust that the universe fucking loves us, right? All of that kind of stuff. That's, that's to me what, you know, in my own personal experience is what's helped me like grow into a completely, a completely unrecognizable person than what I used to be. <laughs> Yeah, and a much truer, bigger right. version. Right, authentic, yes. Of you. Yeah, for sure. And it what allows us to, to dance with the universe rather than trying to impose what we think has to happen or should happen right. onto life. Or fight it. We're working with life. Right, which is huge, huge. Yeah. Well, Sarah, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. I absolutely love the book. Um, like I said, <laughs> I, I used parts of it like immediately in my own life and had just amazing, oh, amazing results. One other thing I love about the book too, and I know you have cards that go along with this, but I love at the end of each chapter you add the refuturing statements, and you talk about this, and um, it's in the book about you know why affirmations don't work, but you talk about refuturing statements from the, the perspective of what if it's possible that right, which helps us soften to that idea but I love those at the end as well as the, the the choose statement which you know it just it, it to me those kinds of things like having that those reminders it, it brings that power back right like I have the power to do this like I can change my reality I can change my life like in this book like in the the things that you talk about here these are the kind these are this is the way you do it yeah and with the card deck you get a what if it's possible and an i choose statement on each card mm, yes mm -hmm. so what if it's possible is expansive energy and an i choose is focusing right right so it could be something like what we've been talking about is i choose to be open to the possibilities within and around me mm-hmm such a different space to live in, right? Than trying to fight those those things, <laughs> which I used to do, and I could speak. Yeah, to I have a lot of experience on it, but totally different now that I've decided. Just decided, show up different, and you know. And so, mm -hmm. again, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the show. I want to just leave the listeners with: if, is there one takeaway or one, you know, anything calling to you today to leave um, as a final thought before we wrap up the show? Yes, to, you know, when we reach for an affirmation or a positive statement, it can feel so far away. But play with the phrase, what if it's possible? Mm -hmm. that, what if it's possible that the universe fucking <laughs> loves me? Yeah, exactly. And that I can trust it. Right. Love it. That's such great advice. I love it. I know, like I said, it's made a huge difference for me. So, um, all right. So I want to close this out. I want to talk about the songs that Sarah picked this week, and then we will wrap up. So the intro song is called The Kundalini Awakening Dance, Let the Shakti In by Paracoy. 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 So do you want to talk mm -hmm. about that song, um, Sarah, and why you chose it? Uh, I love this song because... First of all, it's very sensual movement, mm. uh, music, and there's such a calling in it to me of actually being in the body. Mm -hmm. I talk in the book about my experiences taking chair and pole dancing. Yes, and I'm a dancer too. We didn't even get into the dance part, but yes, I, I haven't done the chair and pole, but I do other forms of dance. But yes, I, I'm with you on the dance completely, and I love that those um, the stories you told. Yeah, and that song talks about being home and when we can move out of our heads into our bodies, that's what's bringing us to true presence and where we can live this authentic vibrant life mm -hmm. and it also is bringing up the feminine energy which is nothing about whether you're a man or a woman mm -hmm. but the the energy we call feminine of being in the mystery and the flow yeah and and that receiving that 
creativity being space. Yes. Yep. And it's what our world needs a lot more of. Agree. Love that. So intro song is Kundalini Awakening Dance, Let the Shakti In by Paracoy. And the outro song is Freedom Lives Within by Nora N. Pure. What, what, what called you to this song? That one is a light song. I mean, the music itself is light. And it calls to me for a different kind of movement. It's still movement. And there are not a lot of words. So it's Mm -hmm. both the the movement and again being in the body but talking about that the freedom is within us yeah it's not something that we find on the outside oh for sure just like safety yeah safety comes from within us and not from outside and i think about victor frankel who was in one of the concentration camps and he wrote that he was more free than his guard mm. because he was free on the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. What an amazing perspective to be, you know, have that in a, wow, that is powerful. And and I, when I listen to the song, like there isn't a lot of words, right? But the words that are said are uh, impactful, right? They're like freedom lives with it. Like they, it ke- keeps bringing you back to that. That, that's what I liked about it, that yeah. it kept, like bringing me back to that. So, okay, awesome. So, outro song "Freedom Lives Within" Nora and Pure. And so I'm going to wrap us up. But before I do, um, Sarah, how can people find out more about you and your book? Well, if people go to theuniversefuckinglovesme.com/sample, they can actually download the first part of the book up through the end of the first chapter. So okay, cool. the I'll link to that in the introduction notes. and the whole first chapter. Okay, awesome. I will link to that in the show notes. I have notes. that website. Yeah, and then my business website is refutureyourlife.com. Okay. So R-E-futureyourlife.com. Okay, I'll link in the show notes as well. So again, thank you, Sarah, so much. This has been so fun. Um, I'm going to close this out this week on our topic of The Universe Fucking Loves You and my interview with Sarah. And I'd love to know what you think of the episode. If you have questions for me, if you have questions for Sarah, don't hesitate to reach out. My email is sloanfremont at gmail.com. My website is sloanfremont.com. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, everywhere, Sloan Fremont. If you like the show, please remember to subscribe, rate, review, tell all your friends so more people can find me. And thanks for listening this week. And remember, make the most of the magic at hand because there is always magic around you. Freedom is singing like a bird over sea. Freedom is living 